When we look at the world today, many don't like to talk about death. But the Bible has much to say about death, especially the death of a believer in Christ. Seeing death merely from a human perspective brings us little comfort, but seeing death from God's perspective brings us great comfort. And I believe God has a word of comfort for us today from the scriptures. I want to begin by reading 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Paul says, Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and who are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. The context here is that a group of Christians in the first century had their own questions about what happened to believers who had died. Some believers in their church had passed away and they wondered when they would see them again. The Apostle Paul in this passage answers their questions. So I want to talk about three things here, especially in relation to the memorial service of Auntie Suguna David. Number one, knowing that Auntie Suguna has gone to be with the Lord will keep us from grieving hopelessly. Knowing that Auntie Suguna has gone to be with the Lord will keep us from grieving hopelessly. Look at verse 13 again. Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. Paul says that it is not good for us to be uninformed about where auntie is as one who has fallen asleep in the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice here, Paul seems to be deliberately using the word sleep to describe the death of a believer. Auntie Suguna is asleep. What does that mean? It means that death is only temporary. When you go to sleep, you don't sleep forever, you wake up. Now, Jesus used this term just prior to raising Lazarus from the dead when he said in John 11:11, 11, 11, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go so that I may awaken him out of sleep. So it is not good for us to be un informed about where auntie is as one who has fallen asleep in Jesus. We know that at a very young age, Auntie Sugana had received Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. She had trusted in his death and resurrection for her salvation. Not only did she believe in Jesus for salvation, but she also built her entire life on this conviction and shared the gospel with others so that they may know Jesus too. And we've heard from the family members that in the days leading to her death, she said, I'm ready to go. She was prepared for eternity. She was prepared for eternity. So death is not permanent. It's only a temporary phase in the life of a believer. Also, sleep implies relief from bodily aches and pains and rest from all of our earthly labors. Sleep is not harsh or fearful for believers. And that's why Paul in Philippians 1.23, he longed to depart and be with Christ, which he said was much better than this world of suffering. So I want to say here that 
that because we know where she is, because we have that hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, we don't grieve like those who grieve without hope. On the other hand, we don't have to stifle or suppress the grief, but let's grieve in hope. Most of us, especially her family, would have a lot of fond memories of her. Sometimes the smallest things take up the most room in your heart, isn't it? I remember a fond memory with her. Once we were driving back from Kamagiri, uh, I had spoken there uh, in one of the assemblies and we were driving back. It was a three hour journey. It was myself and Uncle David Elia, Auntie Sugana, and one more friend in the car. And we, we talked for all the three hours and uh, I got to know about her heart as I spoke to her in those three hours. Her burden for ministry, her love for the Lord and, and her love for his people and how she wanted the entire state of Karnataka to see that the gospel is shared in the state. She shared several stories with me about her childhood and about how she came to the Lord and things like that. And even in Bangalore, whenever I would visit her or visit them as a family, her hospitality always stood out to me. We had planned several times to meet up over a meal, but it never happened. Yes, she is physically separated from us, but what was a separation from our loved one to God, it's a reunion. And that's why Psalm 116 verse 15 says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Deal Moody, realizing that he would soon be gone from this world, said to a friend this way, he said, Someday you will read in the papers that D.L. Moody is dead. Don't you believe a word of it? At that moment, I shall be more alive than I am now. I shall have gone higher. Auntie Suguna went triumphantly in, into the presence of the Lord. She has departed this earthly life and is now enjoying the blessings of being in the very presence of her Savior. Perhaps the best description of a departure is from 2 Timothy chapter 4. She has finished a course. She has fought a good fight. She has kept the faith. So let's not grieve like those without hope. Let's not grieve like those without hope. But how do we grieve in hope? The next verse shows us where our comfort comes from. Look at verse 14. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Which is my point number two. Christ's death and resurrection assure us that Auntie Sugana will rise too. Christ's death and resurrection assure us that Auntie Sugana will rise too. Christianity stands or falls on the resurrection of Christ. If Jesus is still in the grave, I may as well stop speaking right now because I would have nothing meaningful to say. Paul's point in our passage is that our resurrection depends on Christ's resurrection. And as Jesus told his disciples in John 14, 19, because I live, you also shall live. Or as Paul has said in 1 Corinthians 6, 14, now God has not only raised the Lord, but will also raise us up through his power. Thus, death does not separate us from him. If we fall asleep through Jesus, just as certainly as he was raised from the dead, we will be raised from the dead when he comes. Some of you listening to me may not know this Jesus that we are talking about personally. I have no doubt that if Auntie Sugana were here in person today, this is what she would say to you. First thing she would say to you is that God loves you and he sent his son for you. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Jesus himself said in John 10:10, 10, 10, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. But she would also say to you that you are a sinner because the Bible says that we are all sinners. Sinners by birth. 
For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. But then she would talk to you about the good news that the Bible gives, that Jesus died in your place and he rose again to give you salvation. You know, at just the right time, says the Bible, while we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And she would say to you that you must repent of your sin and trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. And he is willing to forgive you and give you the gift of eternal life. But what will happen if you accept Christ as Auntie Suguna did? Well, you will see her again when Christ returns. Which brings me to my final point, and that is, therefore comfort one another with these words. Therefore comfort one another with these words, which is Paul's point in verse 18. Let's comfort one another regarding the soon coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our reunion together. We often think that we are going from the land of the living to the land of the dying. No, we are actually going from the land of the dying to the land of the living. The old gospel song says it this way, On that bright and cloudless morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of his resurrection share, when his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. That's our hope. That's God's promise to us. Life is a series of battles for all of us, and we all take it on the chin sooner or later. But in the last battle, in the struggle with death, there is victory for the children of God. Three things about Auntie Suguna. Knowing that Auntie Suguna has gone to be with the Lord will keep us from grieving hopelessly. Second thing, Christ's death and resurrection assure us that Auntie Suguna will rise too when Christ comes back. Thirdly, therefore, in light of all these truths, let's comfort one another with these words. Fear not, cheer up. If the Lord tarries, we will, have, we will all have to die eventually. But we won't stay dead. We won't stay dead. Let the people of God rejoice because death is not the end of our story. Thank you for listening to these words. May the Lord comfort you and bless you as you ponder on these.